Okay. Well, good afternoon. Iris fans, uh, back on the road here with the Iris pod of the Call and Contact Centre Expo in Las Vegas. I'm delighted to be joined um, by Justin from Metric Sherpa for uh, a bit of a conversation on all things Iris and, and your business. Thanks very much for coming to see us. Yeah, thank you, Neil. I'm glad you had me. It's great to meet you. I know you've had a conversation with Tracy back in Florida. Um, why don't you tell us, first of all, what your business does and how you got to uh, meet Iris? Yeah, so Metric Sherpa is an independent research and advisory firm, and I launched the company because I, I'd run contact center and customer experience teams for a long time. I had been a consultant and I worked for technology companies and didn't really see many people offering to serve customer experience leaders, helping them overcome their greatest pain points. You've got technology that doesn't, you've got consultants that do it. Um, but how do we actually walk alongside people and help them understand where they're falling short and what it'll take to improve? So you spend your whole day looking for ways to achieve those aims in technology a lot of, a lot of time. And I know you, we, whilst we didn't meet, I know you met with Tracy Eckery at the Enterprise Connect Show in Florida. What drew you to to pay attention to us then um, out of interest? Because there's a lot of companies there showcasing a lot of the technology. So what, what stood out? Yeah, so what's interesting about Enterprise Connect or this conference or really any show is there's so much and it um, gets exhausting after a while finding something that's, that's differentiating, that's solving either an old problem in a new way or at least talking about what they do uh, in a way that's captivating and drives intrigue. And when I was walking by the booth and had, Tracy had caught my attention, I think we're actually in line for coffee at first. I think so. Explained a little bit about what you were doing and it A was fascinating because it was a problem that I encountered when I was running contact centers, but even more broadly, just the potential for it just caught my attention. And when, once I saw it in action, it was very clearly stood out to me as one of the most differentiated things that was there. Thanks very much. I mean, we've got the same feedback. I mean, we have the agents here today from Make-A-Wish taking live calls with this. You probably can't hear right now because we have Clarity running on the podcast, but it's a loud environment in this room. And so those, those ladies fundraising with using our technology, you know, is, is, a, is a great showcase. And thank, thanks for calling that out. I, out of interest, you know, with the work you do, the clients you, you interact with, how prevalent is this on their, uh, on their wish list? Is it on their agenda? Because we're getting huge interest people acknowledging the problem, but I'd love to hear your views of being out in the field around the States and wider parts of the world on, on the issue itself. Yeah, there's three challenges that I think about that show up, man. and maybe it's not specifically saying like, hey, we, we really are looking for something that, that does this because people may not realize that it even exists. I'd say that that's fair, right? If I think about the three challenges, one is absolutely call integrity, and there are a lot of factors that can go into call integrity. Um, but I would say more often than not, when I'm in house with an organization and listening to their contact center, there is some factor that is distracting the agent or the customer from really giving the full attention to what's happening on that conversation. So I think that's one. Uh, the second for me is more broadly the applications of analytics and how people are looking to use technology to mine what's happening in those interactions. That I think to me, people have a challenge in making the most of those investments and they're falling short today and they're not able or maybe not recognizing some of the ways that they could solve some of those challenges. Those were some of the things I think that jumped out to me the most. That's actually really fascinating because uh, we were talking offline earlier and I'm having to concentrate over that keynote as, as, as you can hear to have the conversation with you. But, you know, we're here showcasing Iris Clarity um, and that's the, the solution we are getting most attention for. But to your point, you know, this application has multiple use cases and I think your point about supercharging and supersizing uh, recorded audio to get greater understanding and actual insight, whether that's to improve transcription or recognition or just qualitative information, is absolutely an area that we're already getting clients coming to us saying, well, you fixed the real-time problem. How can you help me now with my recorded audio or even my pre-audio where my speech recognition engine is struggling because my customers are in a quiet room? So how do you, how would you advise us to pursue that? Because we're still, we're still working on that. We're still developing in a pace based on customer insight and demand. But, you know, we, we, we've got a very much an open book, I suppose, in terms of where we might take it. Well, sure. I think we should do. I mean, we see organizations making significant investments in the, the IVR or the automated experience, as you mentioned, on the front end, but really trying to get to the root cause of what's happening in these interactions. I think about the conversations I've heard of this conference or the value proposition that so many of the solution providers here are talking about 
It's how do we provide better customer experiences? One of the best ways we can do that is to understand what's happening in our environment. And so we're investing in analytics, but then having all of these issues with integrity or we're not getting kind of great responses back on, on terms of what's happening here. So that to me is the, the value to think about is what's, if you're going to invest in analytics or in a comprehensive uh, IVR, how do you make the most of that investment? And when I look at what Clarity can do to enhance and improve all of the information that's that's being captured there, I think that's one of the ways to make sure you're enhancing that investment so that all of the variables of uh, of poor, poor uh, audio are kind of taken off the table. Yeah, they're taken away from the problem and you focus on what's really most important. I, I, I completely agree. I, I have a view which is, I've been in the space a long time and I've seen technology envelop it and, and you know, really make a huge difference to customer experience. We can all recognize that. However, I do think audio has been left behind at its native level in the sense that now, if we as a consumer choose to pick up the phone to actually interact with someone in real time, that needs to be an important um, interaction for us. We've decided it doesn't warrant waiting. It decided it doesn't warrant a lag in the response. I want to wait in line and have a conversation. But often that the quality of the audio is, is so poor. So the experience is actually underwhelming, even if the agent's brilliant because you can't hear them. So well, I suppose my question is, we need to elevate it back up to the premium channel it is. And how do you see us maybe just some advice on <laughs> positioning as to get that message across? Because I think some customers to your earlier point still go, yeah, yeah, we have the problem, but is, is it worth fixing? Now we absolutely believe it is for that reason. Your customers expect a, ultra HD audio experience, the same way as they would invest in a 8K TV to get a visual experience, but often that isn't the case in contact center technology. Any any thoughts on that, Larry? I, I think a lot of um, contact center leaders who are plagued by poor quality have been kind of numbed and just grown complacent to, to your point. I think one of the best ways to address that is to, to dis to shake it up, to really expose the vulnerability yeah. that's that's there because they've lost sight of it or they've they've decided that it's not worth addressing and, and that for whatever reason, right? That's not worth addressing now. To me, it's looking at what what is being lost in those interactions. How many customers are disconnecting and as a result, sales not closing because they they couldn't interact. How how often are customers having to recontact the organization because the agent misheard something, yeah. put incorrect information in the account, and now that's caused a repeat issue. I think there's a lot of ways that the ROI could could show up. It's just helping organizations uncover what's degrading the quality of your actions today. Are you not able to sell because they can't hear you right? Or are people just making mistakes that are because this person's talking and there's a dog barking and a baby crying and whatever else can happen? Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I think there is... There are so many aspects to this that aren't always publicly visible. And often executives don't know what they don't know until you actually uncover the problem. And the benefits are, are absolutely multi-leveled. So now we've seen that with the clients we've already engaged with. They're already quoting some amazing performance returns on on positive information, but also the, the quantitative of uh, call handling times are reducing. They're losing less staff for through burnout because of the fatigue that comes with having to hyper listen to each other yeah. and things like that. So, so no, I mean, we're very excited with where, where this is going. Listen, Justin, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming by. You're clearly an Irish fan and we're, for, that, <laughs> for that, we're very grateful. We've, I think, retracted a few more followers over this trip and we've got another whole day to follow tomorrow. So um, awesome. thanks once again. Appreciate it. Yeah, and, uh, thank you, Neil. We'll stay in touch. Awesome. Thanks, guys.